Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get into it. Hi to all my viewers in the Netherlands, the nether regions. In particular, uh, Vogel Dustin, but I think it's one of those last names goes backwards kind of thing, so I think it's Dustin. First name could be Vogel. Anyway, thank you very much for sending me the Mailbag PO Box. Se yeah, almost forgot. It's only been like a decade. PO Box 7949, Norwest, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. Um, it, it's been duct taped, so uh, d yeah, there's no instructions to open it, so... No whackers. All right, here we go. We have a note. We have a note. <laughs> oh, um, it... Protective box, protective box, protective box, protective box, protective box. We have a, it is the same, Commodore. There you go. Hi to all the Commodore fanboys. Um, is that Dustin um, with his Commodore collection? I don't know. I'd have to read the note. Anyway, we've seen this before, but we had a naked one before. This time we have, oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. It's, look. Look, 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 look! Ta-da! It's a Pleo! You remember the Pleo? It's even got the munching leaf in it! That Pleo munches on a leaf! Oh! Oh, look! <laughs> the battery holder's missing. The guts had a little... I've never seen, like, I've never seen or felt a real... It's a robotic, um, uh, dinosaur! Still got the original naked Pleo! There we go! So... <laughs> That's what it actually looks like with the skin on. And of course, I think I got it to do something uh, before. But yeah, I'm going to have to see if we can hook it up and get it to... I don't know what it does. It's like, like a learning thing. Apparently, like it's, you know, it actually learns and stuff and becomes your friend. And it's oh, so cute. Feels fantastic. Oh, wow. <laughs> I think little Huxley's gonna like this. If I can get it working. This one does have the battery holder, so hopefully it can go in there. Although, oh no, no, no so I thought it was a different design. No, it's got SD card slot, it's got USB on the bottom, and oh, it's so cute. <laughs> Sorry, not using my good autofocus camera today. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so much fun. All right, I couldn't get Pleo to do anything uh, by plugging in uh, the battery adapter that I had. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It could be dodgy contact or whatever. Anyway, there's three spring terminals uh, down in there, but uh, only two of them are marked. So, don't know what the deal is. But anyway, um, let's feed in uh, six volts right up the clacker and uh, see what happens. Draw enough all and switch it on. Oh, 100 milliamps. I think I heard a beep. Come on, Pleo. It's got little pad sensors on the feet. All four at once. No, come on. Oh, come on. Button. Don't know what the button does. Oh, come on, Pleo. No, it's only drawing 0.2 watts. Um, so it's obviously it's doing something. Maybe if we have the feeding gauge when we switch it on. 0.7 watts. Wah, 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 wah. And again, Dustin did say Pleo was busted. Um, so, yeah, he just like went into sleep mode or something. And that seems to be what's happening. So, oh, not sure what the deal is. But bummer, yeah, I mean, we have gone over the innards um, in a uh, previous video. And I'll link to a, uh, which I did in the previous video, <laughs> donkeys years ago. Um, there's a TED talk with the designer of this thing actually talking about how it was all designed and everything. So I'll link that in as a card up here. If I don't, um, please hassle me in the comments and I'll uh, try and find that and include that in. But yeah, it's really cool. Pleo is just, unfortunately, um, it failed. Yeah, it was a startup thing and uh, I'm not sure what the why. I don't know. I'd have to watch the uh, TED talk again. But ah, uh, it's nice to have a fully skinned original Pleo. And trust me, this does um, feel absolutely fantastic. It's just, I can imagine this just doing its little, little baby dinosaur sounds or whatever. So yeah, it's a shame because they, you know, did put a lot into uh, the design of this thing. I mean, just look at the neck mechanism on that. I mean, just, you know, crazy. And the legs 
are crazy complicated and and just the tail for it to be able to move like that they obviously pull on uh, the various rods and things and you can make the tail uh, you know whip around and do various stuff and it's just yeah there's it's, it's a lot of complexity that's gone into Pleo but I do believe it was a flop so anyway thank you very much Dustin, yes, this is Dustin with his collection here um, at thecommodorecollector.com. So I'll link that in down below. Um, check out his stuff if I know a lot of people are into the uh, Commodores and whatnot. So yeah, check out his site. So thank you very much for sending in an original Pleo. Oh, it's a shame it doesn't go. Maybe I can do some more work on it and um, try and figure out what's what. But yeah, I, oh, it's so cute. I don't want to take the skin off it. I don't. I don't. You skinned a Pleo. One what? Point seven. I think he was, he did do something in the previous video I saw. But you can see how like the leg is designed like that. It's, it really is quite, uh, quite an involved effort there. How to get this thing to articulate properly and do a realistic um, dinosaur movements. And at least, well, we don't know how the dinosaurs actually moved. I guess we've got a pretty good idea. Yeah. Rawr, rawr, rawr. And the workbench of the week today, famous X Devs, um, who is one of the resident vault nuts on the EEV blog uh, forum, and he's currently running a the Nano Volta design contest, which we've talked about on the uh, Amp Hour as well. So yeah, this is an impressive bit of kit. So uh, this is all vault nuttery. This is all ultra high precision, ultra low, you know, voltage, ultra low current, everything, uh, measurement and design and measurement. So, oh, look, look at this thing. This is actually quite a big space. Look at this. And I love the, um, the, the custom, like, uh, extruded aluminium, framed racks and stuff like that and uh in interestingly at the front of the bench we've got the poles which go up like this so that's kind of actually that's kind of handy you might think they would get in the way but if you have like stations set up as is common in production facilities and stuff like that you'll have like individual uh stations so you know you wheel yourself like everything's set up so this uh, station here would be for something this would be for another you know this would be like main working and microscope and yet yeah, soldering and stuff like that another one over here this is be a measurement there looks like you know looks like a lot of the standards are over here and stuff like yeah yeah there's there's the calibrators and everything over there so yeah very impressive bit of kit and thank Thankfully, we've got high resolution. We've got a stuffed animal up there. And yeah, we've got, look, look, a flute calibrator there. And uh, yeah, this is like, this is just, oh my, this is like the multi, the uh, calibrator's calibrator down here. It's just like insane. Um, <laughs> the amount of gear here. And this is all like secondhand repaired stuff. Like he didn't just buy these uh, apparently. So yeah, um, hats off. There's like a decade's worth of like, you know, actually collecting um, secondhand stuff, actually repairing these standards. And look, he's got, you know, SMAs and UHF and BNCs and all the requisite uh, stuff. Keithley parts up here, fluke parts, linear ICs, DACs and ADCs. And um, yeah, this is like, <laughs> this is incredible. This is absolutely incredible. Trash can for bad voltage references that are 2 ppm out in the trash can they go. <laughs> this is great. So that's only the first photo. I mean, we've got multiple angles. Here it is. Uh, so, yeah, this is the... Oh, no, that's, that's the calibration bench in there. So this is another angle of it in here. And this is a reference lab thermostat. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, there's his fluke primary standard up there, or one of them. There's a more primary standards in a rack up here. Wow. Wow. Like, I'm, I'm not, I can't possibly go through every bit of kit here. Sampling with the 3458A. <laughs> there's the, uh, yes, the uh, calibrator's calibrator, as they um, call it in there. What is it? That's a WaveTech um, jobby. Yes, they lusted it when I went to, like, the Keysight Cow Lab in uh, Melbourne. They were, went, yeah, this is the calibrator's calibrator. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> i.e., it's better than the 3458A. So, yeah, uh, it's just, ah, uh, incredible.
And he's proudly showing off his calibration certificates. Look at this. A standard resistor, DC voltage standard, DC voltage standard, X devs, uh, 792. Um, yeah, it's an SR104. Um, yeah. <laughs> and here's the, the references up here. Like, it, they would be um, LTZ1000s, would they? Oh, incredible. Yeah, well, sampling with the 3458A. And I love the thermal chamber here. I love this. Like, probably has, like, references in here just running for months and months and months. <laughs> PPM's void if tampered. <laughs> Calibration reject. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Imagine having all this kit. Oh, Unbelievable. So yeah, there's there's one of the uh, Fluke uh, 734A DC reference uh, standard. That's a primary with two primary references. Um, it, this is just nuts. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Have you seen a better home calorie? Like this is better than cow labs I've been to. <laughs> Actual cow labs. This is just this is nuts. Oh, I wonder what uh, wonder what that is down there. That looks. That looks interesting. That looks like a some sort of like Ethernet-y hub or something, you know, like a high speed bit of it doesn't look like any sort of like a reference um bit of kit. Anyway, he's got a field fox. That right there is worth a an absolute fortune. Probably pick that up and repair that as well. And you know, more Keithley bits of gear. And I don't know what this cast is that oh, that's a is that a Tektronix? Don't know what that is. Is that actually Tektronix? I can't I can't read that. I love the wooden boxes up here. DMM adapters, programming uh, things. HP LCR meter, very nice. Programmable AC source. Oh, Chroma. Yes, they make some nice bits of kit. Search for Chroma stuff on uh, eBay. You won't be disappointed, although you might be <laughs> disappointed if you see the price of some of their uh, stuff. But, oh, that's very nice. Programmable AC source. Um, it's got, you know, the service manuals down here. Oh, this is just, yeah, it's great. Oh, he's got a couple of those, uh, diff probes down there. They're pretty cool. I've been uh, trying to pick one up, uh, one of those up for years, but they go for like, uh, like over a thousand bucks each or something like that. So yeah, he's done some real good eBay in, although I presume he's based in the US, you know, you can get gear like this. It's more readily available than, um, here. And there's his flute calibrator, of course, uh, 5720A. Once again, that would have been fully repaired and calibrated and just like the vault nuttery. It's got a fluke, 8508 reference multimeter. Um, you know, that's is that being repaired? Yeah, repair required. Yeah, so he's obviously in the process of repairing that bit of kit. He would have picked that up at some surplus auction or eBay or whatever. And, uh, oh, what's that ad Agilent bit of kit? That was um, DC multi, what? So oh, it's an SMU, is it? Yeah, source monitor unit. It's some sort of... Haven't seen that before. Wow, that's an obscure bit of kit. But yeah, is it, that another calibrator? Cali it, like, this is just... Pico voltmeter is a custom Pico voltmeter. Of course, he uh, designs and builds custom Pico and nano voltmeters and stuff like that. Um, it's just like... This is just... No, come on. This is, reference, this is insane. Multiple 3458As here. Like, how many of them... <laughs> <laughs> this is just come on. People are just drooling over this. This is insane. Excellent. Copyright. EEV blog 2020. Yeah, oh, sorry. He a lot of people who send in these, they sent them during 2020 when I made the call. And sorry if I haven't used there's like dozens and dozens of people whose labs I haven't used yet. So sorry about that. But uh yeah, that is by far the most impressive lab we've seen. I uh, like no one's gonna be able to beat that. No one. Come on, come on. There's no way anyone can beat that for sheer amount of high-end gear. That's that's unbelievable. Wow. That is dedication to uh, sort, not only source those, but buy them and be able to afford them and then repair them and calibrate them. Um, it's one thing to repair them. Then it's another thing to, you know, calibrate them. And it's just, yeah. And then go to the effort to get them externally uh, traceably calibrated as well. Wow, hats off to xdevs. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, link down below, xdevs.com, I believe it is. Thank you very much, T. Noyce from uh, Craigmore in South Australia. Hi to all my South Australia viewers. Um, they're not in lockdown at the moment, are they? And he has sent it to that crazy Aussie guy. Haven't had that before. It's usually that crazy Aussie bloke. And she's heavy, 12 kilos. What's going to be this heavy? Is going to have a like, big transformer in it or something like that, maybe? 
an old bit of kit, perhaps, I got no idea. Mailbags like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're gonna get. Oh, hey, hang on, I got a note. Dave, I've done a terrible thing. <laughs> got a handle, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to pull it out, so I'm probably gonna have to slice up. Oh, look at this, look at this. You can see the base of it. Check it out, check it out. <laughs> We can see it's got perspex on the back. We can see the PCB. Beautiful. Now, what the heck is it? Whoa, this thing's a beast. What the heck is it? That's one big ass cap in there. Look at that. Wow. It's a H7104D, 100, oh, five volt, 135 amp power supply. I assume it's a, a it must be a switching jobby. Thank you very much, Todd. Normally from New Zealand, um, but of course came to the better country because uh, you're allowed to. Like, like New Zealand's are just allowed to come here. We just let them all in. Um, after two years of Adelaide doing some avionics training, when I cleaned out my workshop to pick up, moved to Australia, I sent you the underground uh, pipe and oh, cable detector. Yes, that was interesting. Thank you very much. With the rubbery PCB, I remember that. It is the last remains of a Dex Vax 11750 that I bought at a surplus computer auction in the mid 90s for 25 bucks so I could tear apart and salvage the parts but never got around to it. Yeah, 5 volt, 135 amp power supply. Has an identical size 12 volt counterpart. There you go, they would have gone into the racks for the deck vac system. Circa uh, late 1970s, see some 984 production date codes. Cool. All right, thank you very much, Todd. Let's check it out. So this has spent 25 years um, in a leaky garden shed. So it's a little bit crusty, but uh, no, these are all like, this is like a welded chassis kind of thing, like front bars to hold it all together. It's, geez, what, you really needed all that strength in there? Um, I know it's heavy, but geez. Anyway, we can see some pin diodes there for you aficionados. No, it's not, it's not hinged, um, but it's a little bit crusty. Not in bad shape at all, actually. Chung Hing is a Chung Hing transformer. Thank you very much. Um, and it's two big bad boy capacitors in there. It, uh, nice looking relay up there. Well, a whole bunch of TO3 jobbies down here. A couple of vertical boards, maybe they'll pull out. So what they've done, it looks like they've fabricated, that's the reason they got this, they've fabricated these, welded them on as like uh, board, vertical board supports. Wow, like why would you do that? I know it's the 70s, but uh, like, there's got to be easier ways to do it, surely. Got one board out and fair enough, there we go, we've got a card edge, a couple of card edge connectors um, at the bottom there. But there was only one board in there. Is that actually a dual card edge or are they just like two separate ones butted up together? Don't know. So there's one of the boards. None of that uh, solder mask rubbish either. Just a tin plate. Um, Fender, we know it's common for the era. And uh, oh, there's one little, one little bodge wire. Oh geez, that's a tiny little bit of pissant wire there. Um, I'm not sure what they're bodging. What are, yeah, what are they bodging? A couple of diodes there. Uh, and that dates it, 1984. Ooh, orange Nippon Chemicons, rare as. 556 five, for the win. <laughs> anyway, the other parts on there, we've just got like uh, some op amps, 301 and uh, 339 comparator. And sure enough, it's got digital on there, so they didn't farm this one out, but uh, yeah, the uh, comparator there is likely uh, like testing the various rails or whatnot. This could just be more, it could be more than the power supply. It could like have a uh, power supervisory uh, role as well, like checking all the rails inside the system. I don't know, there could be like a master unit that checks them all. And I've got to try and lever the board out of here because it's it's really in bad nick. Big moldy way Molex on there. And ta-da, there we go. There's our other board. Not much doing there. I don't know what I, an SGS uh, transistor made in Italy. Oh, I don't want Italian viewers. When was the last time you seen a made in Italy transistor from SGS? Wow, that's really something. Oh, we've got leakage around there. That looks pretty crusty. Hard to say if those caps leaked or whether or not it has come from elsewhere outside. 
yeah, I'd say it's come from outside the system. It's kind of eaten away on the bottom as well. Bias control board. I was going to say, there's no bodges. Yes, there is. One tiny one. Of course there is. <laughs> Track's getting eaten away. Geez, they love their triple fives. Or oh, five, five, six. And there's another one, LM556. Everywhere. Oh, the Mallory fanboys go wild, well, made in the United States of America, 4500 MFD, none of that uh, microfarad rubbish, this is MFD, <clears throat> 200 volts DC, so yeah, we're uh, doing the mains here, they're probably in series. Right, so I'm going to presume that these are our output caps, because these are our output uh, bus bars here, and that connects through to... Um, I like screw terminals on the front. Anyway, plus five volts and uh, return. So yeah, it's just like, what do they just do? Is there some big plug-in connector, like the like the like discrete wiring comes out, I guess. And I don't know what uh, low normal high is. Um, no idea. That behind there is our big rectifier heatsink. They're the big diodes we I showed before. Um, and we've got a uh, thermal cutout switch there and gigantic is that just a gigantic choke anyway look oh and this goes over to this switching transformer here there's a couple of other transformers in there as well wow yeah anyway i'm not going to try and reverse the uh, topology of this obviously it's uh, some form of uh, switching uh, converter to 5 volts at 135 amps because this, this, if this was a linear jobby of course um, it would have a massive transformer in it um, an absolute monster and we wouldn't have uh, the high voltage um, caps on the uh, on the main side of it and it's hard to see down in there but those are uh, Italian transistors again and there's a whole bunch of those so we won't go into any more detail on that because you could go down the uh, rabbit hole and I uh, could do a 30 minute teardown just on this but <laughs> made in Italy transistors those giant ass Mallory caps on there and oh, it's, it's just absolutely terrific I don't know if you've got a score I'm sure there's schematics of this out there um, leave it in the, the comments down below if you got it thank you very much Todd for sending that one in that spent 25 years in the <laughs> his dad's back garden leaky shed um, it's actually in surprising condition you could actually salvage some you know, usable parts out of this thing. Hi to all my viewers in the old dart. Thank you very much, um, M Walker from Grimsby. Grimsby sounds like a lovely place. Sounds like a very British place. So somewhere in the old dart. I don't know where Grimsley is. I'll put up a map. Here you go. Um, I can't say I've been to Grims, um, uh, Grimsby. I've been to the UK a couple of times. Have not been to Grimsby. I spent like a week or two in Bridlington, which is on the um, east coast there. It's a... Uh, what do we got? Oh, that looks cool. I, I assume that's a uh, that's a product kit, something like that. That looks really groovy. And we've got another thing: add to player LCD. I assume this is a teardown. Surely, surely this is a teardown. I assume it's. Yeah, it looks it looks brand new. I, yeah, it's brand new. It's a wrap for our protection. Hi Dave, been following the channel for a few years, really enjoy your videos so much you inspired me to start my own channel, Mike's Lead Shed. Awesome, check out Mike's Lead Shed down below, uh, not to be confused with the other Mike in the old dart, um, Mike's Electric Stuff who does leads, <laughs> coincidentally. In the box you will find a uh, circuit board, this is from an alarm, oh, alarm system that uses a 4G SIM to communicate. Okay, so two teardowns, okay, yep. Yep, looking at it now, I can see the telltale signs of an alarm system design. Uh, LCD screen, bought at a local auction. The story goes, the do-it-yourself company bought a load of these for their stores, but there was a fault and the order was cancelled. I bought this for just two pounds. I've been meaning to see if the screen could be used for other do-it-yourself projects. Awesome, two-minute teardown. Thank you very much, Mike, from Mike's Lead Shed. And there's Mike's Lead Shed address, but I'll link it in down below. So let's have a look. At this PCB, shall we? Yes, and uh, on second look, it does appear exactly like you'd expect an alarm panel to look like. And I've done, of course, the uh, Ness alarm panel uh, uh, repair. Well, I analyzed like it blew the crap out of it. And then they invited me to a uh, tour of the Ness factory. That was absolutely fascinating, which is just near here. Anyway, um, yeah, you can tell at a glance this is an alarm because it's well.
well, it's got <laughs> inputs like this, uh, then uh, some relay outputs like this, and you know, you'd expect to see like uh, comparator inputs like this because uh, they detect a threshold on the line so that you can't just like, uh, you know, like cut it open or something like you can't just cut the alarm wires open. If you do, then it unbalances, you know, it's got to have a certain resistance on the line. And if it unbalances it, then uh, yeah, it sets the alarm off. So they do some, oh, there's extra three extra inputs there. And uh, yeah, it's got some TX output and stuff. And telemetry comms device. Um, I don't know, is that a Yankee thing? This one here is obviously uh, wireless. There you go, a Centurion uh, chipset. Never heard of it, but um, got a can, got a metal can under there. Usually you don't see them metal shielded because these aren't high frequency things. They just need like a microcontroller running it, you know, bugger all. And they've put shielding tape around the bottom too. So looks like I'm gonna have to peel that off first. Yeah, you've got to quote the Joker in this one. Why so serious? They have actually soldered the can down, but uh, we can, yeah, I'll break that off. I'll just uh, bugger it. I'll just get the flathead under there. We're not going to reuse this puppy anyway. There we go. And, oh, it's an Atmel. A bit fancy pantsy. Uh, why that needed the metal can, uh, I don't know. It's an AT91 uh, Sam Jobby for all you AT uh, Atmel fanboys. And uh, it's got a fair bit of memory there. And uh, what's that other chippy over there? Uh, it's an IP101A uh, Ethernet transceiver. So this uh, this is Ethernet over here. I was wondering what that is. It could have been anything. They could have just been using the RJ45 for any, you know, a, a whole bunch of stuff. But um, yeah, it's nothing much doing. What's under this? And if you're wondering uh, why they have this, this is for, uh, you can put in a SIM card in here. This would be, uh, you know, 3G or whatnot to um, uh, then call your mobile phone if your uh, house gets broken into or whatnot. So, and this under here, uh, telemetry communications device. This could be for like wireless sensors or something like that. And they have to be ridiculously low power too. Um, yeah, okay. Right, so T, R, T1, I don't know, I'd have to look up the details on this, but there's some analogy stuff on there. Don't know what's doing. And that jobby down there is a Silicon Labs um, Energy Micro. It might be one of those uh, wireless, um, you know, low power uh, transceivers, something like that. That'd make sense. But yeah, there's not much else on here. You know, you've got a LED display to show you, uh, you know, alarm and setting codes and uh, stuff like that, but yeah, there's not much else. I don't see, uh, there's no ones for dedicated numeric keypads. I think everything um, on this one is uh, wireless, I suspect. And we've got this ad player thing, corner tape. Apparently, uh, that's oh, brand new. Look at that. Still got the sticker on the front. And uh, I don't like, is this, yeah, one of those things that you'd um, have in, say, they're, they're quite common here now, but they use regular LCDs, but I've seen uh, like uh, regular like uh, PC monitors and stuff, but like a, like a little uh, display thing for like a real estate agent or something, they might have like a picture of the house and then it might cycle through and it might have some wanky, obviously some speakers here. So it's, you know, probably designed for at least, um, you know, sheltered outdoor use perhaps. Oh, two button interface. So yeah, there's nothing else in it. It's got like a DC barrel jack and that's, you know, and the two buttons and that's it. Aha, there's our SIM card. That would have our uh, 256 megabytes. A whole megabytes. Wow. So, yeah, that would have our photos or our video slideshow or whatever it is that they display with this thing. I can, I'll have a squiz. So as you saw on the video there, uh, yeah, this was used for like an ad for some silicon sealant, probably in like a hardware store or, uh, you know, something like that. Or that or that was just maybe a test one that came with it, perhaps um, something like that. But yeah, it looks like it just uh, default plays. There's no other files on there, just default plays um, the first MPEG 
that's on there. Man, presumably you could put more and maybe it uh, plays them in sequence. So you could still use this thing. I mean, you know, what is it, like 12 volts in or something? But anyway, let's crack it open. It'll just be a single ball computer and a LCD. Got some nice little speakers in there. And some, uh, somebody had fun with the uh, silicon gun, didn't they? Uh, anyway, where's the, the boards all the way under the LCD? Can we just... Yeah, I think we, there's nothing holding that in. We can just pop that off. And ta-da! Oh. Yeah, we're in. Interesting that they uh, just used a like a button uh, interface board. They've reused it and just run extension wires out to the buttons on the side of the case. But it's all done nicely. They've heat shrunk it and they've siliconed up the connectors. So they, you know, this is a rugged little thing. But uh, there's our little single bore computer. I have no idea who runs that. It chips upside down. All the electrons are going to fall out. But um, yeah, it's just a single board MPEG player. That's it. So Mike was wondering if you could reuse the screen for something else. Um, I don't know. It's got no markings on it whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Can anyone identify the screen? There's, there's nothing on the side. Maybe you'd have to take off the, uh, maybe the outer shield might actually reveal something or something like that. Um, I've been meaning to do the LCD upgrade for that uh, scope that I found in the dumpster. Um, and yeah, it's, it's CRT was gone. And I thought, oh yeah, look, I can do an LCD upgrade. This might be an ideal size. Hmm. Unfortunately, this is not a uh, VGA input thing. It's just standalone MPEG player. But if you could reuse the screen, get one of those VGA boards, then oh, maybe. So thank you, Mike, for sending those in. And check out Mike on the YouTube's Mike's uh, LED Shed. I don't want my viewers in China. There's probably not that many of them, considering that, well, you're not allowed to watch me there. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Zong Weng Weng from Gangzhou in um, China. It's a mailbag. I know what the item is, so it's going to be interesting to see the flavor. We do. It's one of our favorite items on the mailbag, so you can probably guess that it's about that size. Make you guess now, that size, it comes from China. And it's a regular thing that we have on the mailbag. Big surprise. I don't know what type though. So I presume it's the uh, manufacturer or the seller. Ah, yes, right. Okay, we've got a Smart, a GVDA. We've had these, had this um, brand on the uh, mailbag before, but this is like a wanky color screen. Why do you need a wanky color screen? I wonder if it's actually really got a color screen in it. So uh, thank you, um, Tomo, Tomo Lee. Thank you very much, Tomo. GVDA, um, let's see. I don't know, uh, do, do right? Does it have an on off button? Yes, it does on the top. Let's see if it powers up. Wah, 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 wah. Probably got to install the battery, which comes with it probably in here. Oh well, let's go to the bench. So here it is, wanky color, and uh, they've obviously gone for like the mobile phone form factor. And well, I don't know. I mean, are they standard uh, spacing? But I, you, know, you maybe. I don't know. You're either going to be a fanboy of that or you're not. Um, but yeah, it's like a big thick brick mobile phone. And compare the size to a BM two three five. You take the two three five out of the holster, and uh, yeah, it's thicker, but. You know, it's it's on par, but a giant screen, okay, it's color. The digits are probably huge, but uh, no power. Anyway, um, yeah, it's got a uh, LED light on the back. You either like that or you don't. Uh, Non-contact voltage detector. That's, yeah, not a button. That's just uh, they're making it look like it's a, like that's the actual contact point. And yeah, there's no rotary switch. It's all push button detection. So it'd be interesting to see if they've got any relays in there. Auto, auto power off button on the side. That's interesting, but... Yeah, I don't know. This won't be a review, so we'll simply power it up, do a couple of tests, and then tear it down. Oh, it is actually a hol it is actually a holster. Yep, that's the only way to get the batteries in. It's not easy to get off. Urgh, there we go. Cat three thousand volts. Cat four six hundred volts. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a bit how you're doing. Anyway, it is double uh, fuse, six hundred milliamps. Only two fifty volt uh, fuses, though rated not a uh, thousand volts. Well, it does have a metal threaded insert for the screw, so that's all right. Three AAAs, we'll whack those in. But you know what we say here on the EV blog, don't turn it on.
take it apart. Self tappers to get in and change a fuse. It's pretty disappointing that, you know, they went to all that effort to put a gigantic cover on the back and not provide fuse access. Um, that just, like, that's a huge oversight. All they had to do was leave the cutout in there. I, I don't know what's doing there. Okay, so they've got a few tabs on the side. I've had to pry it, pry it off. Don't know what's stuck. Oh no, nothing stuck. Yeah, there we go. Fuses are on the side like that. They are ceramic jobbies. Actually, I don't mind the look of that. Got the big high voltage resistor there. They've got multiple uh, smaller 1206s in series uh, like that. And uh, yeah, what's doing? They've got three different strings over here and multiple strings, multiple strings. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's actually a um, input probe detection input. There you go. One PTC. Uh, I don't see any MOVs, but, you know, I, on these sorts of handhelds, you don't really expect protection, but then, you know, they just give you the bullshit rating of, you know, and <laughs> they even put the um, IEC uh, standard on there and, like, Cat 3, Cat 4, 600 volts, nah, nah. And these are only 250-volt uh, uh, fuses. Are they even rate? Have they even got anything on them? Oh, wow. Wow, they don't even have any branding at all. Wow, <laughs> it's a bit how you're doing. Anyway, that does have 600 milliamps, 250 volt written on it, and I'm sure that one's like the 10 or 11 amps or whatever it is. Um, but you know, it's it's adequate for the front end on a like a pocket in po meter in quote marks. But anyway, uh, relay, of course, yes, no worries. Um, got some uh, big diode array there. Um, what are they doing with the diode? protection there. Bunch of trannies along there. I reckon they're, yeah, yeah, looks like, yeah, relay driver. Um, a couple of those might be protection as well, maybe, but, and that looks like our current shunt resistor, is it? And that's a, uh, protection diode, by the looks of it. And it's interesting how they've done the, uh, stepped PCB design here. I don't think this extends any further under here, because it's all it's all screen at that point. Um, so yeah, they've dropped this down to give room for the uh, two standard 3AG fuses in here. And uh, of course, you know, like the relay, um, you would have thought they'd put that down here, maybe, to like to give it smaller, because that's like by far the biggest part on there. So they could have made it slimmer, but then you've got like the jacks and stuff. So like, there's probably not much you can do there, but um, yeah, so it's, yeah, there's no point taking it out any further. We'll just see the LCD. Uh, what is the chipset? I don't know that SDIC. Um, that one doesn't ring a bell. The, it's the SD750, 7502 or 750.2. Uh, this seems there might be a dot in there. And the other's just a uh, LCD driver up there. But uh, yeah, just the main chipset or the main micro. That's a TM1729, presumably just a, it could be one of those little uh, cheap ass, um, uh, you know, no namer micros uh, from China, or it could be like the LCD driver. But either way, um, yeah, that's the chipset and uh, not much else doing. But the non-contact tester up there, it's just li like just the actual pad um, sticking out of there. So, you know, look, it's it's okay. It's not gonna. You don't buy it for its cat rating specs. You buy it because you like the the price and the function. I don't even know what this costs. What is it? Probably twenty or thirty bucks or something. Like it's probably not much. Um, so yeah, but like internal construction is okay. I mean, you know, the relay. If you had like a magnetic um, thing, that might you might be able to flip that or something. But you know, it's good. It's just it, it's basic for a cheap ass. You know, twenty thirty dollar meter with the pocket meter with like the one PTC and no mobs and eh, yeah, whatever. Where's the ten amp current shunt? That's our ten amp input there. It's going into here, which pops up through to here. Anyone seen the 10 amp current shot? Could be on the bottom. Uh, look, this is not a full review. I've seen enough. One thing I do like is the battery contacts here go down onto the PCB. That's nice. And then they just ruined it all with these two wires, um, which are B plus. Is that like the battery voltage wires? Like, why? Like, they went to all the effort for the nice board to board connectors and just I have two wires flapping around the breeze? I don't get it. Yeah, well, there it is. There's our wanky color display. I don't see how the color adds anything at all, really. And if we care, compare the digits, 
Um, yeah, they're actually, the BM235, I think, is slightly bigger. These are 20 millimeter, I believe. These are probably, oh no, it's close. And of course they've had to like simulate the dial and I guess, well, familiarity, but um, like auto function, can we actually, yeah, we can manually, I don't like, I don't trust the auto modes and stuff. So yeah, there's the Ohmskis, continuity, diode, cap, millivolts. Oh, 50 millivolt mode, that's handy. It's got temperature probe, it does come with a temperature probe, so that's good on a uh, little cheap compact thing like this, non-voltage contact detector and internal temperature as well. Look, little flashing LEDs down here. They're telling, that's, that's kind, I, I like that actually. Look, there you go, 10 amps, it tells you that's, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty funky. I like that. So if we go through to the milliamps again, we'll get the milliamps. No lead, lead detection. So, and flashing LEDs. <laughs> Neat. Wonder if they come up a different color when you got overload. Oh, I didn't spot. 10,000 count. That's pretty nice. Well, the building LED lights are going to get you out of trouble, but it's not going to set the world on fire. And well, the first fail is that they provide right angle uh, probes, which are nothing to write home to your mum about. Um, and they're right angle. Why? Like, that's just dumb on a <laughs> meter that, like, you have them come in straight out the end. That's just, no, 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 no. Completely and utterly wrong. Anyway, let's test continuity buzzer. This bad boy is uh, $37.50 um, um, Yankee bucks. So, oh, geez, that took forever. Nah, that is hopeless. It's got visual alert, but that's a hopeless continuity buzzer. Terrible, Muriel. Give it a go with the gold plater probes. Nah. <laughs> no, at least it's latched. It's loud enough. My standard cap, which is supposed to be bang on. No, 10.19. It's a little bit out, but yeah, whatever. It's good enough for Australia. One of the annoying things is like you can't go backwards if you're manual ranging. Like you've got to cycle all the way through. And if you overshoot, well, why did that go back? Well, yeah, and like if you overshoot, you've got to go all cycle through all the way around again. So anyway, here we go. It, it'll have, yeah, 50 meg, 99 meg range, sorry. So that's all right. The update rate is only a couple of, two, twice a second or something. Ready, go. Hey, that's really quick auto ranging. Slow back. Wow, super quick auto ranging though. A lot of people will be happy with that. And the bar graph is a gimmick because it just updates the same as the screen. It's useless. The whole idea of a bar graph is that it updates like order of magnitude quicker than the screen. So you can see like fluctuations. Nah, nah, might as well not have it. And the contrast of the screen might look good at this angle, but you turn it face on, completely face on, it might still look, oh, it's flickering. It's flickering. That's, I can see it on my camcorder screen. That's gotta be the LCD refresh because I don't have flickering lights here in the lab. All my <laughs> lab studio lights, they do not flicker. So um, yeah, and it just vanishes when you turn it up, you know, at any sort of angle. But even 90 is not that great. You've really got to view it at maybe like at shallow angles like that. I mean, it's really good at these sort of angles like this. But yeah, the other way is just, it's just awful. It, it, you know, it almost vanishes. Like I, I, I can still read. Yeah, that's probably equivalent on the camera to what I'm seeing. But yeah, it's, it's not great. You're paying the price for that stupid color LCD screen. It's useless. Resistance 1K. Yeah, it's a little bit above. 10k, spot on. And the non-contact tester. Oh, high, low, low. Why doesn't it show the bar graph? So, but if we twist that, rotate that, yeah. Yeah, rotate, I can get that to a point where it's not even detecting that. It's shielded by the earth. Look, it's contacting that and twist it and it works. So yeah, that's, that's pretty piss poor. And the automatic function, it does kind of work. So it does like that. But it looks like the auto function mode only works between volts, ohms, and continuity. So it doesn't work between cap. Like it just it just doesn't do it because it's a, it's only searching those modes there. So yeah, I look, I don't know. I don't like these things. I don't like the color screen on it at all. It adds absolutely no value. I'm not a fan of having to like cycle through every different mode like that. And the thing's just too darn big. You don't get any value out of it. All that screen space 
wasted for what a stupid thing like to, to simulate your um, your range switch when you know you got like these huge buttons that take up a lot of space. Uh, there's just and it's not a pocket meter. It's like I don't know. It's some half-assed solution, but it might suit some people. You might like the form factor. I don't know the price point at like 37 Yankee bucks or whatever it is. But ah uh, no, the screen it's it's probably sucks outdoors too. I'm not even going to bother to go outside and try it. But I'm not even going to test this true RMS functionality. If you want me to do a full review, I don't know if there's enough people commenting a full full review please maybe i can add one on the second channel or something but yeah i don't see the point in the color screen i think it's an absolute waste and it's just too big um I, yeah nah yeah nah it's my official verdict and the specs are as absolute bare bones as you get you know half a percent um plus three uh, you know 0.8 for current and one percent for resistance it's just yeah, it, 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 there's better value in the $37 range for a meter than this thing. And you get a pouch with it, but, like, you know, look at the size of this thing. Uh, this one's been here a while, so sorry, uh, anonymous person, actually. Um, it's I can safely do that, so have a guess what that is. Don't even need the knife for that one. But we do like these. What have I got? We do like t-shirts. I think I'm going to like this one. Check it out. Ah, oh, this is good. I like this. Oh, well, I'll put it out here. It's got all the different screw heads. <laughs> is there something written down the bottom? I don't know. I, I avoid warranties. I avoid warranties. This is awesome. Thank you very much. Um, there's no note. I have no idea where it comes from. Um, I'll try and find it and link it down below if you want one. But that's very cool. Thank you very much. Should we have set that in? Sorry to Hugh Glassy uh, from New South Wales, um, Madawi. <laughs> it says open before Christmas. Well, I am. Um, yeah, sorry, it was like back of the rack. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I feel bad when people send stuff in and I just don't get around to it for some reason. In this case, just, um, yeah, odds, of, like, just the odds of it, like, falling down the rack. It's delicate, is it? Open before Christmas. Um, yeah. It's capacitor. It's a Denon cap. 12,000 mic, 63 volts. It's got a couple of diodes. Oh, I think it's supposed to be a tree ornament. I think it's supposed to be a nerdy tree ornament. It, it's gotta be. It's gotta be. It's a genuine Denon for all you Denon fanboys. Look at that. There you go. If this camera will focus, nah, it won't my um, regular mailbag cameras at uh, home and the uh, my and my regular bench camera is actually um down at the bunker um because i shot the sinclair c5 stuff it's still down there so yeah i'm using my um nx70 here cool thank you very much <laughs> also apologies to uh lucas schmidt from austria <laughs> hi to all my viewers in austria not australia um, this one has also, yeah, been there a while. There's a few. I've got two more here that have uh, slipped between the slipped between the cracks. Okay, what, what do we got? What, what do we got? It's a some sort of little um, little board. We've we've got the Ethan Eddies. There's a uh, chip on it with the heatsink, and I don't know why it needs a heatsink. It's an STM32 Dev board with built-in Ethan Eddies. Cool. We'll take a squiz. Okay, Lucas has this little jobby, which is uh, STM F103. It's the same MCU as the blue pill. I have no idea what the blue pill. I don't keep up with these single bore computers these days. There's 10 million of them. Uh, but it's um, apparently you can use it with the Arduinos, uh, which is kind of cool. And um, it still doesn't say why it needs the heatsink on there. I guess it's super powerful, is it? Anyway, it's uh, pre-configured. Apparently we can flash some LEDs from the uh from the web browser apparently a uh, board design files schematic all there tindy and ebay linked down below of course so check it out so i'll see if i can get it to do something anyway it just uses the st um supplied with st link uh, well i don't know if it comes with that but it's got an st link uh v2 and uh you can program that board but presumably um uh, well it's not power over ethernet so yeah we can't do that don't know what these two pins here are they're not actually labeled are they just mounting 
pins. Uh, that would make sense because, you know, at the physical position of them here, that would make sense to actually have that because if you put this in a breadboard over here, then, well, <laughs> it's just going to flap around in the breeze with the Ethernet uh, cable over here. So, uh, yeah, presumably uh, we have to power the thing up and um, it's does that turn it into a serial? Because this is not a serial thing. This is a um, ST-Link programmer. Um, or a clone, anyway. Trying to power it from an external uh, pack here. I'm not getting anything, so I'm not sure if this feeds 3.3 volts uh, through to it. One thing I don't like is that these aren't labelled at all. And if you look at the labelling on there, I, can I can't even barely read that plus 3.3 volts over here for these pins. Like I would have liked to have seen, like there's plenty of room out here for the silk screen and just have like an arrow going in there and put the silk screen labels out here for what these pins over here are. Otherwise, um, you've got no clue at all. And I'd label those ones NC for not connected. If they are not connected, otherwise they're probably ground. I have powered it on now and I think we are getting, we must be getting, yet yeah, 3.3 volts on there. So, connected it through, and we are getting our Ethernetties flishy flashing, so maybe I can access this thing now locally. Unfortunately, I searched all the uh, available internet uh, devices uh, locally, and I can't find this at all, so I am not sure how to access this via my browser. So yeah, sorry I can't do that, uh, Lucas. I'm not going to uh, spend any more time. It's a nice little color-coded little uh, info. Obviously multiple uh, uses given the uh, micro on there. And uh, I don't know if you're into your Arduino-y um, kind of blue pill kind of um, interfaces. Then a new Matrix is uh, coming out soon, isn't it? Um, anyway, um, check it out. I'll leave the links down below. It is uh, open source. You can get the boards and the schematics and the whatnot. Thank you very much, Lucas. Linked in down below. Thank you very much, Kevin Lutzer from California. Another one which is, I, I don't even want to read the date. It's too, it's too depressing. No, no, no. Let's see what Kev sent in. We've got a blank board. Keycap. Oh, okay. Right. And this is a fully assembled. No, this is different. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, okay. We've got two different boards. One is a, a business card PCB. This, uh, you know, plug it into the USB. It's probably got the resume on it. And. Uh, and in PDF format or something like that. And um, it's got a LED matrix as well, which lights up. Sweet, let's check it out. So this is Kev Lutzer from Canada. I'm gonna call you Kev, because that's what we call Kevin here in Australia. Kev, good on ya. Um, Kevin Lutzer, BE, Electrical Engineering and BS Computer Science. Um, the website, kevinlutzer.california, link down below. There's his email, there's his GitHubs, there's his LinkedIn and everything else. And it's got a little, um, yeah, it's a flashing LED card. It's open source, designed with KeyCAD. Anyway, um, yeah, if you hand these out, to uh, it's going to impress people at the job interviews. So I'm going to put that in upside down, don't I? Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, you know, I probably have to turn my studio lights off a bit. It's actually brighter than it looks on camera. Yep. No, smiley face. Hi. And World Wide Web. Yep. KevinLutzer.ca. Yep. Beauty. <laughs> nice. Yes, he got the idea back in 2015, geez, six years ago now. Um, yes, the idea after I mentioned in the video that engineers should bring something to they built to an interview. Absolutely, this is something you can bring and say, yeah, look, I designed this, I programmed it, I assembled it, and, uh, you know, everything else. And, uh, like, that just shows, like, that you're a cut about, that puts you up above, like, 95% of other applicants right off the bat. And then you've got something to talk about in the interview, of course. You can talk about the uh, how Charlie Plexing works. You can go, oh, yeah, look, I did this with Charlie Plexing. Let me explain how this works on the whiteboard. There's probably a whiteboard in the boardroom. Bring along your own whiteboard marker. Um, <laughs> pro tip. And, uh, yeah, like, explain how Charlie Plexing works or explain how, like, I don't know, explain something. Have something ready at your interview to bring along, not only bring along, but also discuss as well. And it helps that it's your own stuff. And he also played around with the bed nails type program, the PCB of which is included, and they can be found at the GitHubs as well. So yes, he says, thank you for the inspiration. No worries, Kev. There's the programmer board for it. Converts a tiny little pin pitch 
pain in the ass connector over here. And um, yeah, you can program all these business cards. Once again, take that along as well. Explain how it all works. Bob's your uncle. Thanks, Kev. I am just hopeless. I really am. I'm sorry to people who send stuff in and I just don't open them in time. Open by 25th of the 12th. Um, well, actually, that's Christmas Day. Open by Christmas Day. Um, thank you very much, uh, d d Ryan. Ryan Wamesley from the UK, the old dart again. Um, thank you very much, but I, I'll use it this Christmas, I'm sure. Oh, it's a snow pie. It's a snowman. Um, uh, I presume, like a, well, no, it can't be a Rosemary pie. So I don't know, uh, Rosemary, did I say rose, Raspberry Pie? Um, it's a, a snowman kit. Um, I like all of the uh, Christmas um, tree flashery things. Um, the kids love those. So I've got many of those in the mailbags over the years. So let's take a look. This is the Snow Pie RGB. None of that just white flashing rubbish. Uh, three colors. And this one's from Ryan. And let's have a squiz at the little kit. He says he's designed a few projects, but uh, this one he's happy with. Oh, I like the, uh, yeah, they've added like the white, the black up the top and then the white. That's that's pretty jazzy. I like that and it matches the black connector down the bottom. That's that's pretty neat. And the Snow Pie RGB. How do you, uh, oh, okay. How do you power it? Oh, it's designed to go into a micro bit. Oh, okay, yes, I do have a micro bit, but not one readily available to run. Okay, it's just a lead interface, right, there's no actual programming circuitry on here, there's no like CR2032, that'd be a nice addition to have it uh, standalone, uh, of course. But yeah, I, so I'm obviously not going to get out a uh, micro bit to program it, but that's how you interface with the micro bit, and um, it's designed to go like that. Isn't it cute? I just like the look of it. <laughs> Neat. Good work, Ryan. I'll link in the website down below, the Snow Pie XYZ, presumably open source, um, so that you could, you know, probably design like a standalone version. If you like the look and feel of it, then uh, take it and add your own stuff to the back. You could, you know, add a coin cell to that. And uh, with the coin cell, you might have a bit of trouble uh, driving the full RGB, but uh, no, you could, like, you could do some neat stuff. I reckon that's cute. Thanks, Ryan. This one sent into Davy Jones's locker. I think it's just drop shipped. I think this is just a two dollar special uh, delivered from China. Uh, I wonder if they're going to end up losing their um, cheap postage from China. It's cheap for a reason, and it's political. It's not uh, the fact that things are just naturally cheaper in China. It's uh, anyway. What? What? There's nothing. There's no description. What is it? Um. Oh, yeah, okay. I do believe that's that's pretty darn small. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to try that out, but I reckon my guess is um, that goes around something and that bit vibrates. Um, yeah, that's, that's my guess. So, <laughs> yeah, right. No, I was wrong. This isn't too small. It was actually too big. Um, so yeah, poor design there. So I had to put it uh, through sideways here. But what it does, yeah, it vibrates and it gives you um, a dithering averaging on your probe. It works really well. Listen. And it's got a pretty butterfly on it too. I, it works a treat. Highly recommended. You can pick these up for like a buck delivered or something. Thank <laughs> you.